And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'll highlight me, spotlight me, so that you can uh, you can still chat without having it affect the picture. So this was a, a an attempt at a a high tech zonker. <laughs> Uh, I did this a few uh, a, a year or so ago, and you used to make the underbody that you put the the braid over. Uh, you used it, the guy that I first saw do it used hot glue, so I tried it with a, my existing hot glue gun, and it just didn't work because it was like the regular hot glue gun, and it just put too much glue on it was too hot it was hard to handle so it was basically a failure <laughs> so then it was when we were down in bellingham uh, for some medical uh, medical treatment i had uh we went to the, one of the local fishing i went to one of the local fishing stores and crap my wife of course being a fabric artist was looking for fabric and bits like that we went to a craft store so i found this guy cheap it's a little guy. It's not very big at all. It, you, instead of using the big chunky glue sticks, it uses these skinny ones like that. Um, and it is and the side it has uh, two temperature settings, high and low. And the tip is smaller in diameter. So it just made it a lot easier to apply the glue to the hook. It comes with colored glues too. You can get you, you can get colored glues, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just using the clear stuff. A few years and ago, that, there was a, a fly. They made egg patterns with the, with the hot glue. Yeah. So I, I piddled around with it a little bit and found that I just need the right size of uh, material. And one of the things to make these things, you need a long shank hook. So this is a 4X long. It's a mustad. Uh, I guess you can see it's a... Uh, must add 93, 94, that's 4X long. It says TMCO. Yeah, TMCO. The other one I use is a must add, and it's a 4X long as well. Yeah. I like the TMCO one because it's it's shiny. <laughs> uh, it's got a ring eye, which hmm. if you're going to be casting this thing, I, I think the way you fish this is you put a non-slip loop on that guy so that it has a chance to wobble. Uh, the the body is mylar tubing, and I've got two different kinds here. And uh, there's a, a silver one and a pearlescent one, and they're both about the same diameter, which is a, a little more in hook gap diameter. Uh, and they're very fine woven. So I, I've got some other stuff that's bigger, but it's it's very coarsely woven, and it just doesn't work the same. So I'm going to use the pearlescent one because I like, I mean, the, the shiny one's fine, but I like the pearlescent because I can play with the color on it. So the materials on the fly are glue, well, hook, glue, thread, of course, uh, mylar tubing, and for a zonker, the back is rabbit strip. And again, this, this, some of this grew out of the discussion last time with Dale about how you tie his, uh, <laughs> his bombs that he he trolls around it with rabbit strip on the back so i've got some barred tan rab, rabbit strip and uh, we'll see how that works so we'll take the fly of the device and i've already debarbed this sucker i'll stick it in the vise so that it, it's nice and secure and we start with the glue and the trick here is to apply it sparingly. And I'm going to start right above, just about where the point is, and very gently start squeezing the glue out of, with the glue gun on top of the hook first. And I want to get it started first before it goes. There you go. And then I'm just going to very quickly apply that along the top of the, the hook. I don't want it really thick. I'm gonna stop just behind eye and 
touch up the back here just a bit. And I'll be able to do some touch up later. I want kind of an even bit of glue down the shank. And you see as it's, this is on, even though this is on the low heat setting, you see how it's sagging a bit below the hook shank. I'm gonna turn it upside down. You see there's not much glue there. So I'm not, I'm gonna boot the same for this one, start at the same place on the bottom underside of the hook, get it started again. And as I come forward, if I get a little better with this, I can probably get moderately even distribution of the glue down the shank. Now the reason for being on the top and on the bottom is that uh, it, uh, I want the, the, this, I don't want this body of glue to rotate around the hook when I start tying things. So I want it on the top and the bottom. I'll let it cool just a hair here. Uh, another thing I mentioned in the, in the email is if you're going to touch the glue with your fingers, wet them first. <laughs> so, so it doesn't, your fingers don't stick to everything. And then to make the belly of this, uh, this fly, I'm gonna put another layer on the bottom now that it's cooled a bit. And this might be a little, a little more. And I'm gonna start about halfway down and I'm gonna squeeze that glue out all the way down to the eye and enough to, to create a little belly on that. Now, that's it for the glue. Doesn't take much. So I'm gonna turn off the heat on my glue gun for the moment. So I don't drop it on the floor and get glue all over the carpet. Now you'll see it's kind of lumpy and bumpy and that sort of stuff. So you can smooth it out once it's cooled off a bit. You can, you can use your fingers to smooth it around a bit to get the shape you want. And if it needs a little, uh, heat you can use a lighter this is my fly tying lighter <laughs> so i just if i just get a, a small flame going here and, and i'll just warm it a little bit on the underside and cool just a hair wet my fingers and shape it a little and then I want to do it on the underside. Also, the other thing that happens when you heat it with the lighter is that it causes it to go back transparent again. That's pretty good. Oh, now, see what happened there? I didn't have uh, my fingernail wet when I touched that. So I'm going to let it cool. I'm going to take my scissors when it's cooled off enough that I can touch it. And I'll trip, trim that little piece off there with the scissors. It's still too warm. Let's just cool it down. Some spit. I'll just trim that. There we go. And I just the odd little bit that sticks out. I want to shape this body reasonably close to where I want it. And then I'm just going to, once again, take my uh, lighter and just, just warm it up just here to make it go a little transparent. And that's it. He's done. Now for thread, I found I need to use at least three odd. Or sorry, I should say six odd. Three odd might get a little bulky, but yeah, it's close enough. And I will start my thread right behind the glue, right over the point of the hook, the barb of the hook. And I'm going to build a bit of a thread base right back to the bend and around the bend a bit, because I want a, a, something on the hook to hold on to the rabbit fur when I tie it on bring that back up right 
to back behind it where the glue is. The next thing is to prep the, the tubing. And I want the tubing to fray at the end so because I want a sort of a frayed tail. So I'm going to stick it out at least gap length behind the end of the hook. And I'm going to cut it off at the front, roughly where the eye of the hook is. Now, just snip that right square across the front. And then from the back end where I've got the loose material here, I'm gonna pull out the core. So the core is just cotton, I think. And I just pull, pull those out. Sometimes they come out easy, sometimes they're a little trickier. So what I've got here now is a, a tube that's basically the length of the hook and I've, I've actually cut it a little long, which is okay, because I want a lot of this loose stuff out the back. So I'm going to expand the loose stuff by taking my bodkin and going in amongst all this stuff on the tubing and separating them out so that they're all nice and frayed and kind of going straight back as much as I can. And there's my tube length which is going to come right behind the eye and and I want just the frayed stuff sticking out the back. Slide this down the hook like that right to where the thread is hanging and leave just enough out front just behind the eye of the hook. I'll take my thread and pull up underneath to pull the bottom of that tubing up, round over the top, down the other side, and do that again. And I'm going to do the same thing where I've got that thread that I attached at back of where the glue is. I'm going to wrap a little bit more thread because I'm going to, this is the platform onto which I'm going to tie the rabbit strip. And to Make sure that it's not going to come undone. I put just a touch of glue right there. Just a little bit. I'm going to put it on the on the thread. Put the glue on the thread. You do that with super glue. <coughs> Pardon me. My super glue in that little bottle is all dried up, but regular glue will do the same. And this just will keep the uh, oval uh, stuff from spinning around the hook when I tie that rabbit strip on. So rabbit strip, I want the rabbit strip tail to extend just past where the shiny stuff that I trimmed off, let off the end. So I've got a nice shiny tail with a rabbit strip over top of it. I'll take that point where I've measured and I'll pull the fur forward to expose the bare, can use my bodkin in here, right next to the leather part of the rabbit strip. And this is a straight cut rabbit strip, by the way. Just it's a little narrower than normal. Um, you can get really thin cut ones, but they tend to be cut on the bias. So you have to search the ones that aren't cut on the bias for hanging on the top. So now that I lay that down right on the spot where the I've exposed the leather, and I'll hold that on top of the hook, and I will put my thread over top, trying to keep the the fur out of the thread. More saliva. Yeah, well that might that work. Works. Too. Oh yeah. There, there's another there's another trick once you get this done. And and that I saw on a video is. You can keep that stuff out of the way by using your tweezers. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and that works like like caught damn actually. Yeah. Now where it really works is I'm gonna have to bend this back out of the way to tie the, the rabbit strip down at the front. So I'm gonna cut the strip off just past where the eye is. I'll do some 
further trimming later down on the pike. So it's a little longer than it needs to be, but I'll fix that in a minute. So to get this to not have thread going up the hook, I take my tweezers and I put them down at the back like that. And I'll do a wrap in front. And this is where I'm going to do my whip finish. Right in front. Um, and what that does is it keeps the the rabbit strip out of the way. Uh, the other way I've seen them do, do it is just doing half inches back there. But if you do a whip finish, I think it works a little better. And then once again, I'm gonna hold that back out of the way and just put a little dab of glue right there. Now make sure that he's not gonna twist around. Okay, I'll come back in the front and I will start the thread right behind the eye. And, and then wrap this over top of the braid, just enough to create a place where I can tie in the rabbit fur and I, I can hold it up like that. Hold it and just pull the loose fibers underneath forward. And then if they're sticking out, I can fold them back a little bit. And that'll cinch that in the way. It's not going anywhere. And I can do the same thing with my rabbit fur at the front as I did at the back. Looks like I got some hair kind of got trapped on here. So I'm going to just loosen up some of that hair. So some of the hair got caught underneath the, the wraps. So I'm just going to pull them out a bit. There we go. So you get a, a more or less continuous rabbit strip. So at the front now, I'm going to just figure out exactly where I want to cut this thing off. And I'll come in and trim it. And just pull out any loose hair out. And then bind the rabbit strip down right on top. And build a bit of a head. Right down to the hook eye. And I, I want a little bit of a head to make it look like the, the nose of the minnow. And whip finisher. I could probably have used the Thompson finisher at the back and made that whip finish a little easier. And that will do him. Again. I'm just going to put just a touch of glue on there. Keep that rabbit fur out of the way. <laughs> just to make sure it's not going to come unraveled on me. Now that's, that's basically the tie, but I'm going to do a little more blitz. I got these guys. Um, these are a Letraset marker, or the other ones, uh, Pan Pantone makes them, Pan Pantone markers. And these, these Tria ones are really neat. You get them in an artist store because they have one end of them has a thick chisel point with a cap. The other end has a heavy point and a fine point all on one piece so they make a really useful marker for coloring things up with some degree of accuracy so once again i'm going to lick my fingers here to get the hair out of the way i'm going to come down and i'm going to give it a green back right up against the the strip of rabbit fur on one side 
Just a little, maybe I'll use the chisel for that. Just run it down the edge of the rabbit strip and then turn it over and do the other side. And you see that does give it a little distinct, distinctly green hue at the very top of the braid. And the next thing is I'm going to give them gills. With uh, this guy with the orange marker, and I'll do that right under the the front of the front of the fly. Just a little bit of red. And he needs an eye. So for a dark black guy, I'm going to use a sharpie, and I just get in there with that point. Dab it a few times. And there you go. That's, that's him. Very cool looking fly, Dave. Question is, does it catch fish? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, zonkers are, are a really effective patterns, actually. They, uh, if, if you want a minnow imitation, that's a really good one. Uh, used them for, uh, didn't use any zonkers in New Zealand. We used big woolly buggers instead. Uh, but you'd fish it similar to the way they fished woolly buggers there. You'd anchor up on the drop off and pitch it out as far as you can. Let it on the sink line, right? let it sink to the bottom. And then you make a nice the, saltwater fly too. Yeah, and and just do a slow hand twist retrieve, and as it when your line gets straight down, hanging near the bottom underneath the boat, they you do what the Kiwis call the hang. You stop and you let it hang there for a while, and then you slowly strip it up from the bottom, and darn it, that you'd catch probably a, at least a third of your fish on the hang just when it was sitting there after having been crawled along the bottom. It was a very effective technique. They used to, that a lot, used that on the Rotorua lakes. So we'll just stop the spotlight for the moment. Uh, where are we here? So, any questions? Looks good. I'd put some dark marks and turn it into a perch minnow. Yeah, that would work. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just vertical bars, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that would that would be I can see that being pretty useful on the potholes in Alberta where you got perch. Yep, you bet. I yeah. would uh I would try uh foam underneath to get the float inside the body to make it kind of neutral or or buoyant depending on how much foam. You know, you'd I think you'd still be able to build the body shape the way you like it. Yeah, the 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 glue is really light. I mean, it, it, it's it's not like it's adding a lot of weight to the fly, mm -hmm. but it's just it's just enough. I think that it causes the fly to to float belly down. It doesn't float flat or or belly up, particularly if you use a no non slip loop on the on the front. Mm -hmm. And, and for those who fish uh, streamers like this, if you don't know how to tie a non-slip loop, we can discuss that another time because uh, it makes a huge difference. I, uh, I brought some show and tell if uh, I can share a screen. Sure. Where are we at? Let's see here. So who what, who's going to show me? <laughs> Wally is gonna is gonna share his screen, and I think he can just do it. He doesn't need you just click on the bottom okay. at the share screen and go for I it. I can I can spotlight him there. I just spotlight him. No, no, let let him share the screen because he he wants to show pictures. Oh, okay. 
Are you getting that? Yeah, I got that. You can. You should be able to go through your photos just like that. Holy oh. crap! That's uh, cool. It's filled with a a, a, a stick of uh, foam and floats. So it has a, a, it's a pike fly. Um, just another color version, and that's. That's the start of the construction. Oh, cool. Foam baton and then tie your So do you glue that do you glue the end of no. the braid before no. before you get that point? No glue. Oh the end. No, oh this uh, the point. That's yeah. uh, uh I use a lighter and I ah, uh, with my fingertips I turn it into a little point and then yeah. just as soon as it starts to melt, I'll take and my fingers to to yeah. pitch it down to to a point. Oh, that's cool. That's the beard. That's and the, that's how how to put the uh, uh, spark uh, hook it through? Uh, tie it, and then you've got. Uh, I use UV to to uh, glue it in place. Yeah, and there's a uh, proof that it works. Uh, And these are just uh, matukas that I, I like. Yeah. Uh, with uh, another feather attached in. It's a, it's a center. And that's a, a, a matuka bugger. I, I've been playing with that. It works well. So you just, you you wrap the, the hackle through the, the 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 vertical hackle to get it to stand, so segregate like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You make things wet it helps to hold it yeah. separate yeah uh, there's another version uh, of, of a pike fly and there uh, that oh. thing is six inches long and casts like a dry fly uh, doesn't soak up the water so when you're using yeah. big streamers with hair and feathers and such it, it, they're torturous once they're filled with water to try and cast yeah. things so this <laughs> clears the water clears out of it right away. Mm -hmm. uh, successful for for the pike. Oh, and and then uh, this is a Mickey Finn, a uh, egg sucking Mickey Finn works too. <laughs> and that's that's uh, that's what all I have here. Very cool. Uh, thank you. Oh, Wally, maybe one of these days you can do the Wally Walker. The, the Wally Walker. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I've got a dry fly. The the large one, the Wally Waker for for no, the the Waker. Sorry, not the Wally. yeah Wally Waker. Yeah, and I've got another one that's called uh, Pan Fry Icon. Uh, there's a picture there I can I can show you if you like. It's uh, I'll share my screen again. Uh, mom, 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 where is it now? Okay. No, I thought that for for this audience, the waker may be a an interesting fly too. Hmm. But this not performing the way I want it to. There you go. That's All got right. it. There we got to run back. There, that's the Wally Waker. <laughs> it's a it's a great uh, uh, stone fly, and uh, actually I. I made it for a uh, traveling sedge. Uh, mm -hmm. I had images of a, of a traveling sedge uh, sweeping past the boat, and uh, and uh, in the image, their legs are very prevalent. Uh, how they're oaring, stroking like a back swimmer uh, across the surface, and so I've added rubber legs to uh, uh, imitate that that stroking motion. Uh, works like a darn. Uh, you can troll so, this thing too if you want. If you don't want to strip it, you can troll it. So you you after you've tied the the, the hair down on the back and and created a bit of a flat spot, that's where you put the hackle before you you trim the top front end off. That actually has uh, three wings. It's three wings. Like a Michelux edge. Yeah. Okay. But with a foam body, and then you put your ha rubber legs on, and and then the hackle, and uh, yeah. And then the front wing. 
Yeah. Well, no, there's no front wing. So that's the that's just right. butt that's sections. Butt yeah, yeah, that's just butts of, of the uh, top wing. So what, wing. what's the material there? It looks like squirrel tail. No, no, that's uh, 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 an elk. An elk, okay. Elk or a deer. Could be a, a coastal deer, too. It, it might be okay. uh, fine. It's nice, fine uh, hair on it. Yeah. That and you you tie the whole fly is tied on top of the hook, right? You don't yeah. travel like the foam is attached to the top. Right. No, you poke your poke your hook through. Oh, uh, okay. At the rear, and swing the foam out of the way. Put your first wing in. Bring the foam around, and yeah, okay. Get your first rib in, and then push the foam down. Put the second wing in. Bring the foam right. back up. Put uh, tie in the next rib. And then yeah. push the foam out of the way again and tie your third in and then bring your foam up and uh, use your bodkin at the eye to poke a hole through the foam uh, in the appropriate spot. And then it stretches the foam enough and then push mm -hmm. your eye through the foam and then put your legs in a hackle on. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So at the, at the thorax, the foam is on top of the hook. No. No, it's underneath. Underneath. It's underneath, underneath the whole way. The whole way. And the hackle and the legs are just wrapped uh, on top of the, on around everything, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Been, I haven't, I haven't cool. tied any of those, but I was, I was thinking of, of tying those sometime. In fact, yeah. I know that some of the lakes out here, they do get a traveling sedge. Mm hmm springtime yeah and and on the on the couch and the caddis flies are pretty common on the yeah. couch as well I, I haven't seen the caddis on the couch but i've seen the mayflies you can't yeah. walk and talk at the same time it's amazing yeah, yeah. there's barracuda i mean there's um, pike flies very similar to your sort of standard barracuda um fly you it's almost okay. the same method yeah jensen uh where's where i saw that Fly uh, made, uh, yeah, uh, pool, 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 no, pool, Georgensen. Georgensen was the man that. Yeah, yeah. The, they're absolute dynamite on Barracuda. Mm. <laughs> Almost anything is dynamite on Barracuda. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like bike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just put a bike. teaspoon with a couple of feathers on and a hook, you know. <laughs> so, Florin, it looks like you're up. Uh, well, yeah, we still. I don't have... need to spotlight you because you're you should be good. No, you don't need to spotlight anything. I just have my uh, I just have my shared screen, and that that should give you guys a decent view. So, uh, good. yeah. So I thought that we have only about twenty minutes left officially. So I should uh, I should get going, and then we can we can chat some more. So this fly won't take long. It's fairly fairly simple and straightforward. And this is uh, known as the coho, uh, the Kelly coho killer. It's a bit of a tongue twister, honestly. Um, and I thought uh, I should call this uh, the disco professor because it's kind of a professor that's tied with flash materials. And so here's how it goes. Whoops. I'm using a size uh, six standard saltwater hook. This particular one is a Togan hook, but it's um, kind of the standard Mastad uh, 34007 shape and size. You put them side by side, they're virtually indistinguishable. And I'm using some red thread. Mine's a little finer than what I specified over there in the instructions. Uh, you can you can get by with six odd. You can also get by with an eight odd, which is what this is closer to. And <clears throat> for the tail, I'm gonna use some uh, dyed red uh, hackle. So this is just a you know your basic whatever strung hackle. <clears throat> and get a decent clump of it. So this is, it depends on the hackle you have. The one I have is, is fairly 
it's fairly fine so I'm just gonna grab sizable clump so I have something to work with here line the tips if they're a bit unruly just dip them in a little bit of water <clears throat> and that's gonna make the whole process very easy so I just wetted these no spit needed just a little a little container with with water thank you Wally for the for the hint now I have my water container on the on the desk yep and I that's guess the only, picture. the only challenge with that is to make sure I don't uh I don't tip it over okay then the original recipe does not call for this uh the professor does use the rib this uh Kelly Coho killer does not, but I do like to to use a rib uh, because it does give a little more resilience to the chenille. Now these um, shiny crystal chenilles, they're fairly, I find them to be fairly fragile. So I would not tie this without, without a rib. Um, this is the main material, so it's a it's a yellow uh, crystal chenille. You can use different colors. You can use uh, chartreuse. You can use the yellow, and you can also add a red butt to the fly. So these are the various various combination. Now I'm just going to do the plain yellow one, and then of course you know how to do the uh, the other stuff. And when I use the chenille, again, I don't like to, to cut it. I don't have spools that are narrow enough to take a whole uh, four meters of chenille or whatever is in one of these packs. So what I do is I just put them on a card like this and then slip the chenille through the hole in the card. And this is going to just give me a length of chenille to work and allow me to cut exactly how much I need. So attach this by the by the core. The the end, no matter what you do, is going to strip itself off. So you end up with a piece of core you can you can tie onto the hook and then move the thread forward. Now let the thread hang down a little bit. If you have a rotary vise there's no need to make a knot or do anything more complicated. Use a use a bobbin holder here you just let the the thread hang down and get to wrapping wrapping the chenille and i'm gonna use my fingertip to try to direct a little bit these fibers so they're not they're pointing a little bit back and i don't overwrap the chenille fibers too much this gives eh, i guess to me it gives a little neater neater body so when i i get to the front and i'm happy i pull a few of these fibers back again and do two or three wraps of thread to secure the chenille okay I'll cut this and put the chenille aside We need still a beard and a wing up front here, so make sure that the thread is not too far up front. And again, let, <clears throat> let the thread hang down and wrap the rib on. If you're concerned that the thread may do something funny and get too far back, you can always use one of the fingers to direct it where you want it to stay, like this. You can even grab the thread between two fingers and keep it out of the way. Okay, so rib this guy. And this is going to be virtually indestructible. This is fairly strong wire. I need to go and procure some more of this wire because I, I 
think I drank the last bottle of that Spanish wine. It's very good fly tying wire, you know, if you're tying these bigger flies. <laughs> it's, uh, it comes on, on some wine bottles and I take that wire mesh off the bottle and then I unravel it and I put it on a spool. And then I, uh, I take each length of wire and I put it on, on a thread spool with a magnet so it sticks to the vise like this. You know, it's very handy. Okay, and you get also to drink the wine at some point, you know, which is a is a nice way of uh, acquiring wire. All right, now enough of that. Time for a throat. So here for the throat, I'm going to use a little bit more of this um, red hackle. So here I have a remnant from a from a feather. This is going to be enough for for a throat. And what I'm going to do is I leave it on the stem. I get it wet, which is going to make it handling a lot easier. Place it where I want it to, to tie it in. And do a couple of light turns of thread on top of it. So now this is going to let me maneuver my throat in place and have it exactly the length I want. So just gently pull until you get the length of throat that you want, which in this case is about here. And then do a couple of solid wraps to secure that. And then trim the hackle, get rid of it. If you're happy with the quantity, you can leave it like this. If you think this is not enough, this looks a little skimpy. So I'm going to do it two ways. I'm going to get another clump of fibers. And again, in order to get these things well under control, I get them wet. I measure so that they, they match the size of what I put there before. A couple of turns to make sure that it's actually the right length. Mm, I can pull a little bit on it. Okay, that's more like it. I'm secure. I got my throat done. And now for the sparkle and the wing. So turn the fly back right side up. And now I'm going to get a little bit of this is just plain pearl crystal flash. And I'm going to fold this in two. I mean, it's already half a strand here. I'm going to fold it in two and I get this way, I get two strands on either side. So again, I can put this, pull this under the thread and put it on top of the hook. I have a lot of length here, so I'm just going to secure it on one side, a couple of turns and pull the other two strands and secure it on the other side. So this is going to be a bit of an underwing slash side wing. And I can already trim this to the length I know I want my wing to be in the end, which is about going about halfway down to the tail. Or to the point where I'm halfway into the tail. And finally, I need the mallard wing. And the way I like to do these things, I'm not very good at getting uh, nice and even mallard wings. So what I do is I take a feather, I cut off the tip of the feather and put it aside because this is gonna be really handy to do wings on smaller wet flies. And it's never a bad idea to have a supply of those handy. 
Small hornbirds. Uh, sorry? Small hornbirds. Yeah, I guess that too. But, yeah. you know, just like regular size 10 professors, you know, uh -huh. for example. And then get this, get this wet, you know, kind of decide how much of a wing you want. This is a fairly generous amount. Place it on top. And again, go a couple of turns. And now start pulling on the stem and get the wing to the length and shape you want. This is still a bit too long. You don't want it to be all the way to the end of the tail. You want it a little bit shorter than that. Still a bit long and still a bit too far. Uh -oh. Sorry? And I'm talking to myself. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Okay. So this is <coughs> something that I find to be pretty close to where I want it. I can pull another millimeter or so. So what I like about this system is that it gives you absolute beautiful, perfect control. Yeah. And again, thank you, Wally. This is the Paul Jorgensen method for oh. doing things on salmon flies, which I wasn't aware of. Um, it was recommended as a method for doing throats, mm -hmm. but I do find that doing wings works like a charm. Mm -hmm. And then trim the remnant on, on the feather because you're going to be able to get at least one more wing out of this mallard feather. And now it's just a bit of tidying up that needs doing. So go to the the eye of the, of the hook. I have a little flash fiber there, but I, I'm just going to leave it there. Cover up all the fibers where it was cut. Make sure it's all clean. And then a couple of whip finishes. and set it aside. I need to, I like to let it dry out because I used, I got my, my feathers wet and all of that. I'm gonna let this dry up properly before I take some head cement here and, and cover, up the, cover up the head of the fly. And that's it. Florin, what would you, how would you fish that? Ho, 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 ho. Just hold on for a moment. This is a coho fly. I never fished for salmon in my life. So you guys know how to fish this. I showed you how to tie it. You tell me how to fish this. <laughs> so what, I would do, what I would do is I would, I would fish this guy um, anywhere where there is trout or bull trout. I would fish it like a wet fly slash streamer. I wouldn't be shy uh, fishing this in a in a lake, you know. I, I mean, once I I had one in the vice and I had some sunshine come on the fly, I was like, okay, well, first time out, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna fish this thing. Well, when when you get moved out here, Florin, you and I'll have to go down to the gorge and see if the sea run cutties like it. <laughs> uh, they they might. I mean, this this also has a whiff. Oh yeah. That's close enough to a Mickey Finn that, that they might not notice the difference. <laughs> yeah. Well, underneath the base, underneath the Bay Street Bridge. Yep, underneath the Bay yeah. Street Bridge. Yep. Yeah. And apologies for my language. I stuck a hook in my finger demonstrating. <laughs> I did that. I did that last week when I was playing with some hooks I shouldn't have been playing with. And yeah. I do it continuously when I'm when I'm doing articulated flies. <laughs> I'm just going to stop the recording here. So. <laughs>